lots of rain today, and I don't think it's gonna stop by the looks of it. And what did I read today? What's with all the news, I guess, recently of Japan trying to use things like drones and all that? This one here says Japan Airlines starts drone service in remote areas for disasters. Japan Airlines has kicked off an unmanned drone service to deliver goods and medical supplies in a remote part of Japan that's prone to heavy rains and landslides. The carrier is working with local authorities in the town of Satoshi, a tiny inlet in Okayama Prefecture that's home to 8,000 residents. A Phaser RG2 drone will be deployed by Amami Island drones for the work JAL said Thursday. People living in the area normally rely on ships for their daily logistic needs, but those vessels are often stranded by rough waves and have to cancel their schedule runs. The average age of residence in Satoshi is 53. And with that, they say they've been testing out, I guess, drones around the area for a while in these ways, but this is the first time, I guess, commercial services are going to be used specifically for disaster reliefs and all that. It says, quote, there used to be a lag in grasping the situation when a natural calamity hit the town, but with this service, local authorities will know sooner. A JAL spokesperson said, similar initiatives are underway elsewhere in Asia. Cross-border drone delivery services between Malaysia and Singapore, for example, may start for critical deliveries such as medical supplies and perishable food local media reported earlier this month. Eh, I guess that's a good thing overall, huh? If it's more efficient and all that, I guess it's just a matter of how much can you actually carry as well. I would imagine it can't be too big just with the way a lot of the hardware and stuff is nowadays, currently anyways. Well, some people are using drones to try to find solutions, I guess, to help people and all that. Other drones are meant more for military applications, but how about this one? It's kind of interesting. This one says, German warship accidentally opened fire on an American drone nearly costing the U.S. another Reaper in its Red Sea fight. What was that, like friendly fire? A German warship accidentally targeted an American combat drone that was operating around the Red Sea earlier this week, but a malfunction spared the U.S. from losing another Reaper drone. The Hessen Assassin class brigade accidentally targeted the MQ-9 on Tuesday while the drone was on a mission in the vicinity of the Red Sea. A U.S. official told Business Insider on Thursday, adding that the Reaper drone did not sustain any damage and the incident is under investigation. That's one heck of an error, isn't it? It says, Germany's armed forces confirmed there was an incident in an online statement that said Hessen engaged a drone that lacked a friend or foe identification earlier in the week. And after coordinating with allied units in the area, the warship fired multiple missiles at the drone. The missiles, however, did not reach the system due to a technical error in the warship's radar system, although Germany said the error was quickly identified and fixed. Berlin's defense minister, Boris Pistorius, also confirmed in a briefing that there was an incident where shots were fired at a reconnaissance drone, but nothing was hit. That ah, makes you think in a funny way too again, isn't it? They want to push things like remote ID and all that on regular people, but this isn't the first time I read a story like this in recent times where when it comes to like military drones, they can't identify which one's a friendly one or not. It's kind of weird when you think about it in that case. And this was really fascinating. It relates to that story about that Arrive Can scandal, which is still, I guess, unfolding on how there's a lot of these companies that apparently did almost nothing but got millions of dollars and so forth. And you'd be wondering, who are the people behind this? So with that in mind, read this. It says, DND suspends contracts with Arrive Can contractor after learning CEO is a DND employee. That's crazy. Just a day after the federal government announced a review of its program to support indigenous contractors, CTV News has learned the CEO of a company that prompted the review is an employee of the Department of National Defense. David Yao is the CEO of Dallin Enterprises, which received $7.9 million for its work on the ArriveCan app. The Defense Department confirmed Yao is currently employed with them, but has been suspended. Due to the serious nature of the concerns raised, DND is launching an internal investigation into the matter, a departmental spokesperson told CTV News in an email. The individual has been suspended while this investigation is underway. We are in the process of suspending contracts with Dallin. Just think of how, I guess, corrupt this whole thing is again when you really dive into it. And it says the Globe and Mail first reported that the company presents itself as an indigenous owned and together with another company, Coradix, worked on the ArriveCan app. 
According to the Globe, the two companies are in receipt of $400 million in government contracts. Indigenous Services Minister Patty Hachu yesterday announced a review of how it awards contracts to Indigenous-owned businesses. The government's policy is that 5% of the total value of the government contracts go to Indigenous businesses by 2024. That's the same question too. Once you, I guess, find out what happened, the people responsible and all that, will anyone actually be punished for it? That's the question. Hey, see you guys later.